Ah, very dramatic and a little bit cringy. Hey guys, I have some super nerdy stuff to share with you today. Just got done scoring a sleep study and it has a perfect blend of crazy stuff that I really, really wanna share with you guys. So this is a severe apneic, it's an all night titration. So they start off on CPAP, severe back-to-back -back obstructive sleep apnea. So you can see exactly what obstructive sleep apnea looks like, how many arousals pop up, things like that. The second thing is they have these severe apneas, but it goes away during stage three sleep. N3 sleep, a lot of people don't know this, but severe sleep apnea actually goes away during N3 sleep or slow wave sleep. And the last thing is we have a really significant period of REM rebound. You nerds are gonna love this. I love nerding out on this stuff. Uh, REM rebound, if you don't know what it is, if you've been deprived of REM sleep for a really, really long time, you'll tend to have a lot of REM to make up for it when your airway is left open. Once their airway is protected, they have REM rebound. So typically REM will account for about 25% of the sleep of your total night. So for example, two hours out of eight hours slept will be REM. This person has significantly more REM. It's an insane amount of REM. I've never seen a REM period this long or this consolidated in my 21 year career. Embrace your nerdiness. If you're not a nerd, become a nerd because this stuff is really, really cool. I love it. So this is the, the PAT flow. This is a person's breathing. So I have all these events marked in here. Uh, the next thing that we have that I want you to draw your attention to is this is this little window up here is the hypnogram. So this is a blood oxygen desaturation that we see. See how much they're dropping right in here? This all this area, all these red things right here. If I'm clicking on them, you can see that this denotes obstructive apneas that were tagged. Look at all these obstructive apneas, and those go along with these desaturations, like huge ones, right? These are like 11% of saturations and more. Now, if I were to skip ahead up here, you can see these turn to pink. Those are all hypopneas. And again, look up at this. We have to cross-reference everything. I'll try to point out all this stuff as we're going along. Okay, this is an all-night titration. I'm gonna go to the front of the study. This line here is the uh, IPAP and this is the EPAP. They're the exact same now because the person is on CPAP. So watch this titration, What? watch what happens. I'm just slowly advancing, right? Bunch of obstructive apneas, tons of leg movements. We're not scoring those because they're associated with the arousals, but look at this, just absolute chaos, right? And this is with them on CPAP. Now they've been increased to six. Why they didn't go up to seven, I don't know. That's bizarre, but uh, they didn't. So that's what we're doing here. Cruising along. Okay, now they just increased to seven right here. They increased to seven. Um, the interesting thing is you think seven did something. No, not really. And the reason I say that is because they're going into delta sleep. So this is slow wave sleep. Something weird about that is that obstructive apnea seems to always go away in slow wave sleep. So you may think that, oh, wow, seven and eight really did something here. It didn't watch for everything to break loose later. But see, so many learning opportunities in this one. So really slow wave sleep. If I were to zoom in on this, which I can tell someone wants me to, look at that, that's slow wave sleep right there. Look at those nice, big, slow waves. Okay, enough of that. Okay, person finally goes into REM sleep, immediately wakes up, and there's a problem, which happens. Okay, now we have a bunch of hypopneas. They're at eight. I told you things would fall apart again as they're asleep, hypopneas. So eight has resolved the obstructive apneas. From five to eight, the obstructive apneas have become less. They're now hypopneas. That is how PAP therapy works. We're gonna keep increasing. So they switched them to bi-level here. They went bi-level 12 over eight. Now, why didn't they just keep increasing on CPAP? Well, the reason is this person has COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So bi-level was the that the, the first choice in this case as as listed on the instructions but look at all these leg movements so now we don't have events here but we do have leg movements look more events so they increase 13 over 8 by level now they're going to have to keep increasing that ipap because look events keep on occurring nothing's going to change 13 over 8 okay now 14 over 8 what happens Ah, still hypopneas, but to a much lesser degree. So now 15 over eight as we continue on, still hypopneas, but look at this, REM sleep has started. We've been in REM sleep for a while now. Now this is the first REM cycle for the most part, and I want you to look up at the top. Look at this, this red line right here denotes REM. They start right here 
and they end REM way over here. This is pretty much 4 a.m. They started at about, we'll call it 12.15. They almost had a REM period of four hours. That is some REM rebound for you. Now, if you don't know what REM rebound is, it's when you've been deprived of REM so long that you have these just insanely long periods of REM. And that's what happened here. This is the longest REM rebound period I think I've ever seen in my life. This is insane. So the person's airway is finally protected and by God, they're gonna take, <laughs> they're gonna make good use of it. So REM it is. Anyway, 15 over eight, this person is on their back in REM and eventually they go 16 over eight. And you look at all these arousals, so just tons of arousals in here. Awakening, awakening. Right there, 16 over 8. And finally it catches up, and watch this. All of a sudden, smooth sailing. So this is how CPAP or bi-level is supposed to work. It's supposed to protect the airway. Now we do have these residual hypopneas in here. They're not causing arousals, but they are causing desaturations. It's actually this one, it's not... It's barely enough. Look at this, as we cruise through, there's really gonna be nothing. They're titrated at 16 over eight. Really cool. So this is something I tell people all the time. You're gonna see these transient central apneas during REM sleep, nothing to worry about. You can see there's really not much of a desaturation, 3%, I mean, that is a, you have to expect something with, with no breathing, but there's no arousal, so really nothing to worry about. But you're gonna see all of the, a lot of those little transient central apneas in REM sleep. Look at those massive eye movements. Beautiful, beautiful rim. Let's let's take let's take a closer look at that. Look at those big eye movements. Beautiful, beautiful rim. Okay, enough of that. We're trying to plow through this. So as we go through this, I mean, look at all this. Those are all central apneas that were tagged. We have a hypopnea there. You have to tag it, but doing so well at 16 over eight and just continuing on. So this is the benefit of CPAP and bi-level, the benefit of positive airway pressure, holding your airway open so you don't choke and suffocate at night. So look, we've come a far cry. We'll move back here, but look, that from the very beginning of the night, right here, that's an inappropriate CPAP pressure. All of this, terrible, right? And this has become this. Nice consolidated sleep. So this record was a really good learning opportunity. I just wanted to share it with you since I had the opportunity to do so. And this is really the point. This is what we're trying to achieve every time we put someone on CPAP. So could we say that uh, sleep apnea is real? Let's go back here. Yeah, this person's not breathing right here. Yeah, that's sleep apnea. Does CPAP work? Yeah. It works. It doesn't really get any more clear than that. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this. I'm really glad I was able to share it with you. Okay, so whether you're just a nerd like me or you're an aspiring sleep tech, why you would be that, I don't know. But if you're looking to get into the field, this is a real neat primer on some of the cool stuff you can see. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Do me a favor, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content. Check the description box down below for ways you can help this channel out and check out my website, axgsleepdiagnostics.com, where you can find a lot of services that may help you out, such as home sleep tests, which you're probably already diagnosed, so you don't need that. But we also do pap therapy analysis, where we try to tweak your settings so you can get the most, the maximal benefit out of using your CPAP, your BiPAP, or your ASV machine. That's it, I hope you enjoyed the video, and have a good night, bye. Everyone's too embarrassed to say it, your mask stinks really bad. Get some Maskbrite at maskbrite.com or Amazon. Thank you to all watching, but an extra thick thanks, buddy, to Ray Troutman, Sarvesh Joshi, Stuart Hetherington, and Mona Swearingen. And thank you to my other level Patreon supporters, as well as my YouTube members.